Ancholika, it's a very interesting journey that you've had after being an ex McKenzie and after seeing the shores of US, you come back to the country and get involved with a very fantastic concept called Wishberry uh, to a country which doesn't know what is crowdfunding. So fortunately, you are also managing a similar concept in the US with McKenzie, uh, researching on crowdfunding and social initiatives. Yeah, yeah. So you came back. Wishberry is a very attractive and a very nice word. Samir will always say name matters a lot because that's how it lasts longer in the memory of people. Why Wishberry? What's behind the name? Okay, so uh, we have a very confusing history. Uh, Priyanka, who unfortunately could not be here, my co-founder, she started Wishberry as a very different business. It uh, started first as a business for uh, uh, advertising on taxis. <laughs> Then she moved on to doing a uh, wedding gift registry online. Uh, so there's a concept in the US where you, know, you can tell your friends what you know, they should give you in marriages. Um, and you register that with a you know, store and people go and buy those things. So that was originally the name of Wishberry, like whatever you wish you get kind of stuff. But uh, she was, she, I think she started as an entrepreneur much before I joined her. She started in 2009 with all these concepts and, you know, she was trying something and pivoting and, you know, whatever was not working or working. And People uh, generally cross seven seas for, the boy crosses seven seas for the girl. I say that a lot, yeah. <laughs> and you crossed it for another girl. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, so Wishberry happened because of her, meaning that the name. Uh, and we didn't change it because it also went with the whole spirit of crowdfunding, which is whatever you are dreaming of, that can come true. So whatever you wish can come true. So in a paragraph, how will you explain crowdfunding? Because there is a very thin edge between crowdfunding and collective investment schemes. <laughs> a collective investment scheme is an illegal criminal act. I have been, I have been making this, uh, I have been telling this uh, and explaining this for the last five years. <laughs> So, dealing with people in India who are very, very, you know, glued to paisa diya hai to kuch wapas milega kind of mentality. Whoever you explained crowdfunding to, they were like, acha to profit kya hai? <laughs> so, and, and this is a very, very Western concept. It is, forget about being Western, it's, it's a philanthropic concept. Uh, where uh, if you like an idea, you give it 500 rupees. That's it. You know, and... Uh, through online, we can reach out to a lot of people. So for example, if I'm a filmmaker and I want to make a film in 10 lakhs, now I can keep chasing that one person to give me 10 lakhs for months. And if somebody gives me 10 lakhs in one go, obviously he will come with a lot of expectations. He will ask for profit. He will also maybe get into creative control, all sorts of things to just make sure that he gets most bang for his buck. But then what if we enabled this filmmaker to go to 1000 people and ask for 1000 rupees each, right? This concept works for those filmmakers who are budding filmmakers, who cannot convince because they don't have any, you know, legacy or credibility of films that they have done in the past. So when you start doing that, the person who's giving 1000 rupees is not thinking of anything in return because it's just 1000 rupees and he knows that he's giving it to support that uh, filmmaker. So all these films that are offbeat, intelligent, go into Cannes and you know, all sorts of film festivals abroad, but don't get a release in PVR because they do not have Salman Khan in it or Shah Rukh Khan in it and all sorts of masala. Where do they go? They are very, very good films and people don't get to see them. So for them, crowdfunding came across as a complete boon. And what is the difference between crowdfunding and collective investment schemes? So collective I think, yeah. investment is simply that, you know, I am giving you a th thousand rupees or two thousand or whatever, but in return, I'm getting something uh, in money, in yeah, money. It could be interest, it could be profit. So that is illegal. Um, if you announce it publicly and you say that, you know, I'm going to give you back monetary things, then it is illegal because then you're acting like a public company. Yes. And yes, you're not yes. a public company. So crowdfunding is basically you pay money to somebody that you follow as a fan, Correct. to a musician or an artist yes. or a filmmaker. Yes. And you get some privileges in return you against get some that. Privileges in return. So, like, if I'm a filmmaker, I'm making a film, and I and you give me thousand rupees, I will give you the link to watch the film first, and you don't have to go to the theater. Uh, if you give me five thousand rupees, I'll call you for the premiere of the film, sit uh, sit with you, uh, make you sit with the cast and crew. If you give me ten thousand rupees, I will give you name in the credits of the film, maybe a role also. You know, people come with various 
innovative rewards also. So Wishberry actively got into crowdfunding in 19, uh, 2012. But in uh, technically into the crowdfunding activity yes, in 2012. 2012. Yeah. But I think crowdfunding initially happened in 1976 yes. when a film called Manthan yes. was funded by 5 lakh farmers in uh, Gujarat. Each paid 2 rupees, collected 10 yeah, lakhs yeah. and made the film. So, so that's Benigal, also yeah. Sham Benigal did that. So basically, if you remember the first cooperative ad of Amul, uh, they wanted to tell everybody about their milk revolution. And Sham Benigal said, we need 5 lakhs for it and uh, 10 lakhs for it. And uh, at that time, nobody had money. So they went to the Gujarat farmers, all of them gave 2 rupees each. And if you look, if you ever come across the poster of Manthan, it doesn't say Sham Benegal presents Manthan. It says 5 lakh farmers of Gujarat present Manthan. So that's basically what it is. So out of the films that you have funded, there are three films. There are three films which has won national awards. Yeah. One is Gunga Pelwan. Yes. Right? Yes. And these are small budget documentary type of films which have made so it big. Fascinating story. So uh, these, the, the one thing that I've learned in while doing crowdfunding is that all filmmakers in the film industry are engineers. <laughs> they were engineers and then they moved on to doing things that they really wanted to do. So similar story um, about these three kids from uh, a management in institute. They found out a story of this uh, wrestler in Haryana who is actually deaf. He's a deaf and dumb, dumb wrestler, but he's got India three gold medals. His name is Virinder Singh in the, uh, you know, the, the Olympics that happened for the deaf and dumb people. Um, but nobody knew about him. Uh, if you even Googled him, you would not be able to find out who this person is. So these three kids from um, this management school thought that his pit of film banni chahiye. In, uh, you know, we should tell his story to the world. So yeah, they raised, uh, they just wanted 3-4 lakh rupees to go and shoot in his, you know, place and all. And, and uh, this was their first film out of college. They weren't even expecting anything. So I remember when their campaign went live uh, on Wishberry, 3 lakhs was their amount, target amount. And one woman from the US saw it online and gave 1.5 lakhs. So, one to aise ho gaya. <laughs> And then a bunch of other people, I think about 300 people eventually funded this film. And then it won a national award in the best documentary debut film as well. So, that was a very big deal. So, Wishberry, like any other enterprise for whom you raise funds, this is a concept that you all started, you and Priyanka started. Yeah. You also needed funds. <laughs> and you have got some best names in the industry who have funded. So 45 people in the beginning itself got them a fund of 4 crores. <laughs> so what as an entrepreneur was your pitch to them? It is not that 4 crores which is more interesting. It is more interesting of who gave those 4 crores. Right. So there is the MD of Google and then there is uh, Mohandas Pai. So how did you reach out to such unreachable people? That's one question. Mm -hmm. And what was your pitch which gave the investments into your company? Yeah, so fundraising for this concept was a journey in itself. So earlier, uh, I think uh, one thing that Priyanka is really good in is that she approaches an investor when she is in a position of bargaining. You know, so she's like, she doesn't approach when she's fully aware that, you know, now we have something to show and, you know, we don't have to prove anything right now. So for the first year or maybe actually two years, we did not approach anybody. We thought, let's just prove this concept. I think after we had some uh, three, four crores raised for about a hundred projects is when we thought, okay, now let's just start going. So in the process, in the two years, we had started meeting a lot of people. So through them, we uh, could reach out to these people. We had built some goodwill and stuff. So and what was your pitch? <laughs> I think our pitch was very simple. It was uh, that we just want to put uh, India on the creative map of the world. We are very sick of the fact that uh, everybody has to do engineering and doc doctor and all of that. And I myself, actually, I'm, I'm a closeted uh, artist. If I was not doing McKinsey, I would have been a dancer and a singer. I was training to do that in school. But I remember my parents never encouraging me for this uh, role because they thought that there's no money in it. So if you would have had that kind of money, would you have yourself invested in a Vishberi type of a concept? Absolutely. I think it's a slam dunk. I mean, it's very simple. If I like some artist and he's asking me for 500 rupees, why will I not give? I wouldn't even think twice. Investments. Three crores, four crores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The so type of investments that correct, came in. Correct. So I will absolutely. You would have done that. Yeah, absolutely. Now tell me, there is a first more advantage kind of a concept that we all know. Yeah, yeah. 
so there are two things to the first advantage first more advantage you can either be a super hit or you can be a flop why nobody is doing it because nobody finds it interesting why somebody is doing it because he got the eureka moment and he realized this is an idea that can really work yes. what was your confidence when you began crowdfunding because when you began this concept it is more of educating the people what crowdfunding is then getting it crowdfunded yeah. so how did you do that so i think we were very focused um right after we started we were the first crowdfunding platforms to start in india and i think within months i just how herd mentality is in the country there are two three other platforms also started but they were not focusing on any sector they were just crowdfunding platforms where if somebody wants to raise money for their cancer treatment can also raise funds if they want to have films to raise funds they can go there so they were not focusing on any sector they were sector agnostic that is one way of doing this business absolutely so we till date enjoy the first mover advantage because nobody in the creative industry knows any other platform other than wishberry because we say that we are only for you guys we don't have anybody else and also when you say that you also mean that i won't i don't want to put a film project raising money next to an acid victim who's raising money that will become so funny right that <laughs> people will think who to fund so that's why i think our focus uh, helped us gain that popularity gain Uh, made people gain confidence in us that we are not just saying what we are saying we also want to do so many more things a lot of people know kickstarter as a very large organization for crowdfunding operating out of the us kickstarter and indiegogo yes. these are some large boys large players operating out of the us uh, how are you different than them okay so indiegogo and wishberry are completely different because indiegogo is sector agnostic uh also there are certain rules that uh, different uh, platforms follow so for example on indiegogo um if you want to raise 10 lakhs but if you end up raising only say 2 lakhs you can take the money but on kickstarter if your project goal is 10 lakhs you cannot get anything less than that so you will get 60 days to raise that money if you're not able to raise it the money simply goes back to people that is the pro that is the concept even on wishberry so wishberry and kickstarter are are directly comparable because kickstarter is only for creative industry and follows this uh, rule so the way we are different from hence kickstarter is um, so in india crowdfunding is all about or just any social media communi communication is all about marketing yourself you know pitching to the people and uh, telling them this is my idea fund in this so when we started out we realized that indians are very shy they don't want to talk about what they are doing in a manner that they are you know in confidence and all of that so we thought okay i think we will have to handhold everything we'll have to make their marketing plan we will have to do the social media communication which is not something that happens on kickstarter so you give a complete wholesome support services correct even if the guy doesn't have the capabilities to project himself you draft the plans for him correct correct now we all know in business in competition the big fish eats up the small fish mm -hmm. in uh, simple language we call it mergers mm. and in crude way it is takeovers mm. so has kickstarter noticed you and are they in the plans to approach you or have you approached to them because they are the large boys right so uh, so first let me say that i'm a big fan of kickstarter tomorrow if kickstarter comes and says we want to acquire you i'll be like when <laughs> and where do i sign <laughs> i hope they watch this program <laughs> Um, somewhere so last month i was in the us and i went to meet the kickstarter people oh you've already done that yes i've already done that i've been their fans in 2009 i mean honestly i started this because i saw kickstarter during that mckinsey project and i thought this has to happen in the country um so i love that organization for what it is it it, it has always took a stand on creative industry want to move it the founders all the three of them are creative artists one of them is a musician one of them is um, an artist and all of that so um, they have a very different dna that is the only company i know in the world which turned a profit in 24 months wow. uber has wow. not uh, amazon i mean not amazon but the others that airbnb and they took forever to you know break even and stuff so these guys have been very focused uh, cost conscious so i like that company as for for its ideals um so we really wanted to go meet them i wrote to the ceo and he just responded in 24 hours saying that yes absolutely come we know what you're doing and it was a fantastic meeting he sat down he asked everything from how do priyanka and i divide our responsibilities to you know what is your goal what is your vision and we told them everything so 
they did say that if we ever come to India, we will definitely talk to you. Uh, but uh, so you have already broken the ice with them. Absolutely, yeah. Uh,